It was a special day at Merriweather Farm, and Farmer Stubble wanted everything ready. So did Mrs. Stubble. Have you got a clean shirt? Shall I bake a special cake? How long till they get here? Someone, or something very important, was about to arrive. was on his way to Merriweather Farm as well. But where was Doug? Why wasn't he with Dick today? Farmer Stubble was beginning to wonder how long he'd have to wait. Hello, Farmer Stubble! Farmer Stubble was in quite a state. Where is it then? Has something happened to it? And where's Doug? Don't worry, everything's fine. Oh, where are you going now? To leave the truck out here. Be a bit of a squash in the yard otherwise. Farmer Stubble was about to remind Dig that the farm was on a hill and to be careful how he parked when he heard a noise. Oh, is it? Could it be? Hello, Farmer Stubble. We're here. Farmer Stubble could hardly believe his eyes. My new, my very new and very own tractor. So, what do you think? Oh, yes. Oh, it is. Don't you think? I do. Oh, quite definitely. Show him some of the tractor's clever bits, said Dig, who was back from parking the truck. Doug pointed out the very small wheels at the front for steering, and the very big wheels on the back so the tractor didn't get stuck in the mud, and the hook behind for attaching things to. And then came Farmer Stubble's big moment. Go on then, Farmer Stubble, shouted Doug. Start her up. Now, try forwards. OK, stop her there. But the tractor didn't. Stop! Stop! shouted Dig and Doug. I can't find the brake! It's the pedal on the floor! shouted Doug. Tea, anyone? My special cake's nearly baked. And just in the nick of time. Very nice, dear. But must you park it so near to the house? As they were going in for tea, Dig was telling Farmer Stubble how important brakes were. The thing about brakes is, they're very important. Then, they heard the most terrible noise. Funny, said Doug. I could see our truck from here just now. Where's it gone? You know what I was telling Farmer Stubble about brakes, Doug? Said Dig. Doug nodded. Well... I think I know where our truck might be. Oh, dear. Dig had left the handbrake off and the truck had rolled down the hill and into a ditch. Best get it out, is what I reckon, said Farmer Stubble. But it won't be easy, cos it's wet and muddy. Start her up, Dig, said Doug. Give her plenty of revs. It was no good. The wheels were skidding. You push. I'll drive this time, said Doug. Right, said Dig. Still, it was no good. The truck simply wouldn't budge. Hello, Uncle Doug, called Daisy, coming up the hill. 
but as she got nearer, she found it very difficult not to laugh. What are you smiling at? Yes, what are you smiling at? You, said Daisy. Suddenly, Dig saw Doug's face. Look at the state of you! And Doug saw Dig's face. Well, look at the state of you! And when they explained what had happened, and how it all began with them delivering the new tractor to Farmer Stubble, and what they now needed was a very strong something on wheels that had a hook on the back, Daisy came up with a plan. Back at the farm, as Mrs. Stubble was polishing the tractor, she accidentally started the engine. Mildred, are you all right? Ernest, what are you doing here? She asked. Dig and Doug have got their truck stuck in the ditch, he told her. Well, mind you, don't get it dirty, she called, and went inside to finish baking her special cake. See you later. Daisy watched as they began to put her plan into action. But something was missing. I know. We need something to tow it out with. How about some rope? said Daisy suddenly. Rope, of course, said Dig. So Doug went to see if he had any. Oh, good. And luckily, he did. He tied one end to the tractor's special hook and the other end onto the truck. At last, they were ready. The big question now was, would it work? Ready, Doug? said Dig. Ready, Dig? said Doug. Everyone held their breath as the tractor began to pull. Never mind, said Doug. I'll fix that later. Let's try again. So they did. And while the Farmer Stubble took a turn in the tractor, Dig tied the rope to the truck and Doug stood back to see what would happen. That's it! Dig shouted to Farmer Stubble. She's out now! And the three men congratulated themselves on doing such a good job. Daisy smiled. She knew it was really her idea, but she didn't say anything. That was clever, Uncle Doug, she said. How do you manage to have such good ideas? They all went back to Merriweather Farm, where Mrs. Stubble was waiting with her special cake. Everyone admired it. She told them it was the most dangerous cake she'd ever made. Whatever could she mean? Mrs. Stubble smiled. I forgot to put any brakes on it, she said. So you'd better eat it before it runs away. Dig and Doug were in the bulldozer, on their way to a building site. At least they thought they were. 
Can't see any building sites here, said Doug. Me neither, said Dick. Looks more like fields to me. Suddenly, they had to bring the big bulldozer to a halt. Something was blocking the lane. Looks like a trailer, said Doug. It does, said Dig. And a tractor. Like the one we delivered to Farmer Stubble. Looks like turnips to me, said Dig. Looks like turnips to me, said Doug. Then, something even stranger happened. Oh, 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 oh. Talking turnips. Oh, I don't like this. Me neither, said Dig. And just as they were about to leave, the strangest thing of all happened. Hello. Ah! Farmer Stubble, said Doug. Are you all right? Ow! No, I am not. And he explained what had happened. He'd been taking a trailer full of turnips up to the pigsty when the whole lot had fallen off and he was sure that something was wrong with the new tractor. Right, said Doug. The first thing we'd better do is take a look. Right, said Dig. Let's get cracking. Whoa! Whoa! Where? Whoa! 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 Dig looked at the trailer, while Doug looked at the tractor. Nothing much wrong under here, said Doug. Nothing much wrong under here, said Dig. Looks all right to me, said Doug. Looks all right to me too, said Dig. But Farmer Stubble wasn't happy. One minute, his turnips were on the trailer, the next minute they weren't. Hmm, said Doug. And then he had an idea. Dig, hop in the trailer a minute. So Dig did. Hey, how's this? School champion at hopping I was. I didn't mean that. I meant get in the trailer, that's all. Now then, said Doug, and he explained that they had to find out how the turnips had got from the back of the trailer to the lane. And the best way to do that would be for Dig to pretend to be a turnip, because if he did, they might be able to see where he ended up. Dig thought this was a very good way of solving the puzzle, but he did have a problem. Uh, I don't look much like a turnip, do I? Not really, said Doug. I think you look more like a carrot, said Farmer Stubble. Never mind what you look like, just get on with it, said Doug. And he raised the flap on the trailer. Now, roll about a bit. Dig did. <laughs> Looks more like a cabbage now, said Farmer Stubble. They were no nearer to finding out how the turnips had fallen off when suddenly... Oh! I know what's wrong, said Doug. And he explained to Farmer Stubble that if he didn't lock the trailer when he carried things in the back, they'd all fall out. Things like turnips, said Dig. Exactly, said Doug. 
nothing wrong with the tractor at all. Farmer Stubble was very pleased. Silly old me, he said. Silly old you. Silly old you, said Dig and Dug. Oh dear, someone was wanting to get by. Come on, I've got passengers in here and they're hungry. Passengers? And all those turnips? What were they going to do? Doug said they'd have to load as many as they could as quickly as possible. But it wasn't that easy. Hey, hey, hey! Just then, who should appear across the field but Daisy? What are you doing, Uncle Doug? she asked trying very hard not to laugh. And when Doug explained how Farmer Stubble had had an accident with his trailer and how Dig had pretended to be a turnip, which had helped enormously, but now there were passengers in a hurry, turnips in the lane, and nothing to clear them away with, Daisy came up with a plan. A bit more, a bit more. A bit more, a bit more. That'll do, said Dig. Right. At last, they were set to put Daisy's plan in action. Stand back, Daisy. Ready when you are, Doug. It was all very tricky. Finally, the lane was clear for the lorry to pass. Hooray for Dig! And you, Uncle Doug! Hooray for you too! Thank you, Daisy, he said. I now declare this lane open. As the lorry pulled forward, Farmer Stubble raised his hand. Stop! he shouted. Got a little something for your passengers! Turnips, anyone? Yes, I thought they might be favourite. And as the lorry pulled away, the passengers all said thank you. Now, where were we? said Doug. Er, uh, lost? said Dig. Ah, so we were, said Doug. And what's the best thing to do when you're lost? said Daisy. Er, uh, have lunch? said Doug. So they did. Dig and Doug were on their way to Merryweather Farm. Whatever did they have in the back of their truck? Farmer Stubble was busy ploughing his field when Dig and Doug arrived. Morning, Farmer Stubble! Morning! they shouted. But he didn't stop. It was a big field, and he had a lot to do. So, 
Dig and Doug set to work. Now, what Farmer Stubble wants us to do, Dig? He's what, Doug? He wants us to build him a fence. Now then, the first thing we... Dig? Dig? Where's he gone? He was here a minute ago. Oi! Who put the lights out? Don't muck about. We've got work to do. Pick up those posts and bring them over here. So Dig did. And eventually, they started on Farmer Stubble's fence. Hmm. Need to hit it with something heavier, I reckon. Like this, said Doug. Just the job, said Dig. I know what. And Doug went to get something else. How about this, said Doug. Just the job, said Dig, who was sure there was an easier way of doing it. Are you sure there isn't an easier way of doing this, Doug? He asked. Quite sure, said Doug, taking a huge swipe at the post. There you are. What did I tell you? Oh, right. There's only one thing for it. Uh-oh, said Dig, who guessed what was coming. And he was right. The sledgehammer. This should do the trick, he said. Poor old Dig. He was shaking like a jelly. Hold it still, said Doug. Ready? No, said Dig. On the count of three, then, said Doug. One. Two. Three. Oh, dear. It didn't look as though they would ever get started, let alone finish. We'll be here all night at this rate. Cheer up. We'll think of something. Just then, Daisy arrived. Hi, Uncle Doug. How's it going? She asked. Fine, said Doug. Almost finished, haven't we, Dig? Daisy knew they were in trouble. She'd been watching them and wanted to help. I was wondering, she said. Are you ready for the tractor yet? Tractor? Why would they want the tractor? Because if you are, Farmer Stubble said to give him a wave. Did he? said Doug. Yes, said Daisy. He said he'd put the bucket on the back. Did he? said Dig. Yes, said Daisy. Bucket? What use would the bucket be? Dig and Doug were very confused. But before they could answer, Daisy gave Farmer Stubble the signal. Here you are, gents, said Farmer Stubble. I'll see you later. Oh, for Farmer Stubble, uh, where are you going? asked Doug. Lunch said Farmer Stubble. You, uh, you couldn't give us a hand, I suppose? asked Dig. Sorry, lads, he said. Nothing comes between me and my lunch. <laughs> and he went off, chuckling to himself. Dig and Doug just couldn't think how a tractor with a bucket on the back was going to help them. But they had a feeling Daisy did. Uncle Doug, she said at last. Do you know how to put fence posts in with a tractor? Of course we do, said Dig. And while he tried to explain, Doug climbed aboard 
and started the engine. What next? He shouted, deep thought. Raise the bucket, Uncle Doug. That's it, shouted Dig. Raise the bucket. I tell you what I'll do. I'll raise the bucket, Doug shouted over the engine noise. Great, shouted Daisy. Ready, Dig? Ready, said Dig, shaking like a jelly again. And when I say now, drop the bucket on top of the post. And she stood back to see that everything was ready. Now, said Daisy. And to Dig and Doug's amazement, not only did the post stand up, it was as solid as a rock. It's as solid as a rock, said Dig. Well done, Daisy. Couldn't have planned it better myself. Certainly couldn't, said Dig. And with that, Doug said they hadn't time to play with Daisy anymore, and they really must get on with their work. Daisy watched as they went all the way round the field, putting up Farmer Stubble's fence. When the last post went in, Daisy clapped. And the winners are Dig and Uncle Doug on the tractor, she said. Very good, said a voice suddenly. It was Farmer Stubble, back from lunch. But I'm afraid there's a problem. A problem? What could be wrong now? Daisy suddenly realized she was on the outside Dig and Doug were on the inside, and there was no gate. You think we've forgotten the gate, don't you, Farmer Stubble? Looks a bit like it to me, Doug, and I'd quite like my tractor back. No problem. We'll put a gate in for you, won't we, Dig? said Doug. Course we will, Doug, said Dig. Just as soon as we've had our lunch. Nothing comes between us and our lunch. <laughs> Dig and Doug had received an emergency call from Merriweather Farm. I can hear it from here, said Dig. Me too, said Doug. Better get a move on before it blows up. Farmer Stubble had to get all of his bales of hay into the barn. And his conveyor belt was making such a noise, he had to block his ears with two turnips. Mrs. Stubble brought him his mug of coffee and had covered her ears with turnips as well. Here you are, Ernest, she shouted. But of course, they couldn't hear each other. Ernest? Ernest? Ernest! It 
was no good. Suddenly, the machine finally broke. And the farmer Stubble saw his wife standing next to him. What did you say, dear? He said. What? She said. I can't hear you, dear. I've got turnips in my ears, he said. What? She said. I can't hear you. I've got turnips in my ears. It was hopeless. Neither could hear what the other was saying. Luckily, Dick and Doug arrived. What's up with you two? said Doug. And what have you got on your heads? What? said Farmer Stubble. Doug saw what the problem was and removed the scarf so he could hear again. Then Farmer Stubble explained the trouble he'd been having with his machine and how he had to get the bales of hay into the barn. Doug told him not to worry and that all he needed were his tools and a cold drink. So while Mrs. Stubble went for the drinks, Doug went to fetch his tools. Stand back! This could be tricky! I'll, um, I'll go and help Mrs. Stubble with the drinks, I think, said Farmer Stubble. Good luck! Give that a little turn, Dig, while I give this a little tap. Well done. Try her now. Try again. He just couldn't think how to fix it. Mmm. Tricky, said Doug. Very, said Dick. Doug was also beginning to lose his temper. Oh, you fixed it, said Farmer Stubble, hearing his machine humming nicely. Piece of cake, eh, hey, Dig? said Doug. Nothing to it, Doug. Farmer Stubble gave them their drinks, asked them to help load the bales of hay, and they agreed. To you. To me. Stand back. And up she goes. To you. To me. Stand back. And up she goes. To you. To me. Stand back. And up she goes. Just as they finished, Mrs. Stubble arrived with another tray of cold drinks. Oh, just what I need. Me too, said Doug. But then, something terrible happened. Oh! Oh! Oh, dear! Ernest! Oh! 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 She said as she travelled upwards. Farmer Stubble couldn't believe his eyes. Mildred, what are you doing? Luckily, they managed to stop the machine before it was too late. Poor Mrs. Stubble. She wasn't happy. I'm not happy, Ernest, she said to her husband. I can't move. I don't like heights. Get me down. Right, old dear, said Farmer Stubble, not knowing what to do at all. In fact, no one had a clue how to get Mrs. Stubble down. And then Daisy appeared in the yard. What are you doing, Mrs. Stubble? Trying to fly? And when Doug explained how they'd fixed Farmer Stubble's machine and helped him get his hay bales in before it rained, which it hadn't yet, but might any minute, and how Mrs. Stubble had brought them drinks, sat on the machine, and the next thing they knew, she was stuck up there. Daisy came up with a plan. Is this plan of yours safe, Daisy? asked Mrs. Stubble. Don't worry, said Dig. 
Everything's under control, Mrs. Stubble, said Doug. Poor Mrs. Stubble. She didn't feel anything was under control at all. And as Dig, Doug and Daisy agreed plans, she wondered what they were going to do. Right, said Daisy suddenly, and explained what would happen next. The basket on the ground was full of turnips. The one in the air was full of Mrs. Stubble. As they unloaded the turnips, the basket on the ground would get lighter, which meant it would go up. And as it went up, Mrs. Stubble would come down. And, if all went well, she'd be back on the ground in no time. What if it doesn't go well? asked Mrs. Stubble. You'll be down even quicker, said Dig. Can't lose either way, said Doug. And so they began. Mrs. Stubble could hardly look. Slowly, the pile of turnips in the basket went down. But still, Mrs. Stubble stayed in the air. And then, suddenly, the basket began to move. One more should do it, said Doug. Daisy took out another turnip. Still, one more, said Dig. Very carefully, Daisy took out another, and everyone held their breath. <coughs> Mrs. Stubble was so frightened, she hadn't realised she was down. It's all right, said Daisy. You can look now. Oh, thank goodness, she said, and didn't even wait to get out of the basket. Thank you, she said. Thank you so much. Gently does it, Mildred, said Farmer Stubble, lifting his wife out. And as Daisy hugged Mrs. Stubble, the other basket, with all the turnips in, came back down again. <laughs>